Got a part here off a tractor, uh, actually off a cutter bar off a tractor. I need to fix this for my neighbor. Uh, when he gave me this, he said, it's cast, you're going to have to braise it. Now, I'd reserve, I do oxyacetylene braise, but something that I would want to oxyacetylene braise would be something that was really thin. You know, if you had a, if you had a, something like a steel hydraulic line that had, that had worn through and it was leaking because it wore through and you wanted to repair it so it didn't leak anymore and you needed to build up some material on it because it had, uh, there, because there was an area that had worn thin, I would say uh, oxyacetylene braze would be great for that. Uh, on, on something this thick, I'm gonna arc weld this. Now it is, it does appear to be cast. No doubt about it. Uh, is it cast steel or cast iron? That makes a big difference to me because if this is cast steel, I'm going to weld it with a low hydrogen rod. I'm going to take a, a 7018 and weld it. If it's cast iron, I would weld this with a nickel rod. And there's a couple ways uh, people would go about Welding a part like this. Uh, a lot of guys would want to grab this thing and, and grab a grinder and, and bevel it. Uh, the beveling is a good idea. You, you know, you need to get penetration. But you also got to remember, you need to get this part put back on there where it goes. Uh, you may have a little leeway depending on what it is, but as close as you can get it back to where it goes, the better. And one of the easiest ways to do that is just to realize that when things break, for the most part, these parts will fit back together like a puzzle. Now, you might see a little gap in certain places where you can't press it together because maybe when it broke, there could be a an area that that reached out and deformed enough that you can't perfectly press it back together but this puzzle piece idea is an idea that I use a lot to put things back together because what I'll do is I'll grind whatever I have to to get this piece to fit back just perfectly like a puzzle and then I'll tack it there and then I'll choose a side and I'll weld it on that side. And then I'll go to the other side with a carbon arc and I'll, I'll back gouge that out until I reach the weld I made on the other side. And when I've contacted that weld, then I know I've eliminated all the crack and weld that up and you got a full penetration weld. And that brings us back to what are you going to weld it with? Well, the way I tell what I'm going to weld this with is with an oxyacetylene torch and a cutting tip. Because I'll take a part of this piece and I'll try to cut it. And the reason I do that is if this is cast steel, it'll cut with a torch like steel. If this is cast iron, it won't cut with a torch. When you heat it up and try to blow oxygen stream at it, it'll just laugh at you. It, it'll behave very strange. So that tells me if I can cut this with a torch, just like a piece of steel, then I can weld it with a 7018. If I cannot cut it with the oxyacetylene torch, then I'm going to weld it with a nickel rod. Uh... So that's how I'd go about that, and one thing I've noticed on this is this plate, uh, this is a, a steel plate for sure, it's in my way. So i got to take that off, and then I'm going to do a little test on this with an oxyacetylene cutting torch, and see if I'm dealing with cast steel or cast iron, and then we can move forward. I would have got started on this earlier. But a buddy of mine called me, he's a truck driver. If you got any buddies that are truck drivers, you know they're all pricks. 
But anyway, he called me. He's wanting a piece of steel for a uh, log trailer. I got, I got that for him. And uh, it's funny how them truck drivers are, because they all come off as pricks. But they're all like, they're the kind of guys where, like if you was a new guy on the job and you showed up and, and, you, and you didn't realize that you needed to bring a lunch with you because there was nowhere, nowhere where you was working to, to get anything to eat. Those guys, like they're the kind of guys, they'd share their lunch with you so you'd have something to eat. <laughs> but they're also the kind of guys like, when you, talk, when you talk to them and shit, they come off like complete assholes. <laughs> That's cast steel. We're going in with a low hydrogen rod. Now I've goofed around with this a little bit. Uh, when you do this puzzle piecing, you can't always expect it to go together perfect. If you look at the bottom of that where it's kind of tweaked out, that's from the part bending when it finally broke. So don't expect that part down there to line up exact. You know, I'm gonna look at, right here's a casting line. And I know that that line is going to be straight. Um, you can probably, it's safe to assume that the top of that, the, the straight part of the top of that would be parallel with, with the rest of the assembly. I think I've got it where I'm ready to tack her up. And when it comes to connecting a ground clamp for arc welding, you know, there's a lot of times we'll just put our ground clamp right on our table. If we're fabricating clean metal, that generally works great. And there's no hassle to it because you can pretty much weld on it anywhere you want. As long as the piece is on the table, it's grounded. When you're dealing with a part like this that's dirty, it's got paint on it. Or if it's something that you've got to make sure that you don't get any arc burns on, then you need to ground directly to the piece or it's a benefit usually if you do. And what a lot of guys don't realize is you can do this wrong. You can do this backwards. And what I mean by that is, you see I cleaned a spot right here. I cleaned that spot because I want to get a good ground to my ground clamp here. Now the next thing you should notice is the part that, of this ground clamp that I've put on the clean spot is the part connected to the, to the cable. And that's important. Because if I was to put this on the other way, if I put this on like that, and the cable is here, and this side is dirty or has paint, and this side actually grounds, then where is my electricity going while I'm arc welding? It's either going through the hinge point in the ground clamp, or it could even be going through this spring. Well, if you get that spring hot, it's going to ruin it. If you get a bunch of arc burns or issues inside of this hinge, your ground clamp's not going to work anymore. You can, uh, you can do this wrong, and you need to look at what side of your ground clamp your cable is connected to, and make sure that that's the side that's very well grounded to a clean spot on the piece. Now I got this tacked up, I got a tack right here, put a tack right there, and that area where I <clears throat> did the torch test and cut a little bevel, I ran a weld right there on this side, about three quarters of an inch long in the middle, in the middle of the cracked zone. 
And the, the reason I've got this the way I have is since I'm going to run a bead on this on one side with no bevel and then back gouge the other side till I get to my weld and then weld it, I looked at the part and I decided which side would I rather carbon gouge on? Which side would I rather back gouge? Well, I'll tell you, for me, this 90 degree inside area right here is an area that I don't want to, I don't really want to carbon arc that. I could, but I don't prefer to. If I'm looking at this part, it looks to me like I would much rather back gouge right here in this short run and across here and down. Uh, if I'm going to back gouge this side, then I'm going to run my first weld on this side. So I'm going to do that now. And if I look at this part, it looks like I've got this fairly parallel. There's a cast line right here that's lined up pretty close. and I feel pretty confident that where I'm going to weld this on, it's going to work. Um, you could spend two hours worrying about the positioning of it, but if you get it wrong, it'd take me 15 minutes to cut it off. So I'm not going to sweat it. I think I've got it where it's going to work. Weld it up. Got a pass run on this side. <clears throat> Going into this side with the carbon arc and gouge it out until I hit that weld I just made on the other side. And of course, this area right here where I put that little three quarters of an inch of weld to help hold the center, it'll be cut completely out. I started carbon arcing on the other side of this and I just found out something that I didn't really realize when I ran this weld here uh, on the crack on this side. I didn't realize that over here beside this, uh, this part is extremely thin. So when I was arc gouging this, I arc gouged right through it. I'm going to weld this back up before I do any more gouging on the other side. But obviously this is quite open. I can fit that 332 rod completely through there. Well, something you can do, a little trick, this is a carbon arc rod that I was gouging with. Now this carbon uh, won't stick to steel, no matter how hot you get it. That's why we use carbon rods when we gouge. But it does conduct electricity, and it uh, can actually be used in a situation like this, because if I hold this carbon rod behind here, basically as a backer, then I can weld the hell out of that hole, and that carbon rod will help hold that weld there so it doesn't just burn out as a bigger hole. And that's what I'm gonna do. No thin spot there now. Moving on. Got that gouged out here on the back side. I grinded some here and here. I can't really get a grinder in there. But that's okay. 7018 will cut right through that stuff.
That's welded up. I'm going to smooth off the roughness while it's still hot. Well, I think that's all for that. This part of it right here where this part bolts on, I grinded that off so it was flat. And these flat spots right here, I grinded those off. That weld there to the right, I don't think that's in the way of anything. I'd say leave it. Same thing with that lower left. It's not in the way of anything. What's here on the back, I don't think is in the way. Leave all that and this is done. Off to the next one.